Whenever we talk about transmission lines, we imagine those giant overhead conductors stretching across fields, valleys, and rivers, carrying electric power from one city to another. But these conductors are not just passive wires. Along their entire length, three invisible companions travel with them, shaping the performance of the line, resistance, inductance, and capacitance. These are called the constants of the transmission line, and they are the reason why power transmission is not as simple as connecting two ends of a copper wire. Let's begin with resistance. Resistance is the natural opposition of a conductor to the flow of electric current. In a transmission line, this resistance is not concentrated at one spot. Rather, it is distributed uniformly along the whole length of the line. For easy analysis, however, we usually imagine all of it lumped at one place. The formula is simple enough. Resistance equals the resistivity of the conductor multiplied by its length divided by the area of cross-section. But resistance is not fixed, it changes with temperature. If we denote resistance at temperature T1 as R1 and at temperature T2 as R2, then R2 equals R1 multiplied by 1 plus alpha times the difference between T2 and T1. Here alpha is the temperature coefficient, which itself is obtained from the coefficient at 0 degrees Celsius. So as the temperature rises, resistance increases almost linearly, that is why transmission lines heat up more on a hot day or under heavy load. In a single phase or two wire DC line, the total resistance is called loop resistance, which is simply double the resistance of one conductor. But in a three phase system, the resistance per phase is the resistance of just one conductor. Now, what does this resistance actually do? It is the primary cause of power loss in the line. Every ampere of current passing through creates a loss equal to current squared multiplied by resistance which appears as heat in the conductor. In long lines, this can mean huge amounts of energy lost to the atmosphere. In three-phase systems, this loss occurs equally in all phases, thereby reducing efficiency. So, resistance directly eats away the useful power that should have been delivered to consumers. Now let's talk about inductance. Whenever alternating current flows through a conductor, it produces a changing magnetic flux around it and this flux links with the conductor itself. Because of these flux linkages, the conductor has inductance. Inductance is defined as the flux linkages per unit current. Just like resistance, inductance is also distributed along the entire line, but is often considered lumped for calculation. In a single phase line, two conductors placed parallel form a loop, and even though it may seem like just a one-turn coil, the area is so large that the inductance is significant. In a three-phase system, the situation gets more interesting. Each conductor not only links its own flux, giving self-inductance, but also links the flux produced by currents in the other two conductors, leading to mutual inductance. If the conductors are placed symmetrically, say at the corners of an equilateral triangle, the inductance per phase is equal. But if the spacing is unsymmetrical, each phase develops a different inductance, and this means unequal voltage drops even if currents are balanced. Imagine one phase dragging behind in voltage while the others run ahead. The system would become unstable. To avoid this, engineers use a clever trick called transposition. At regular intervals along the line, the positions of conductors are swapped so that each one occupies every position equally over the full length. The result is that the average inductance of all phases becomes the same and balance is restored. So, what is the practical effect of inductance, you might wonder? Well, inductance resists changes in current and introduces a reactive voltage drop. In three-phase transmission lines, this drop causes the receiving end voltage to be less than the sending end, which, you know, reduces the voltage regulation of the line. High inductance also increases reactive power, and this in turn reduces the power factor. So, while resistance wastes real power, inductance, uh, spoils the quality of power delivery by creating lagging current and poor regulation. Finally, let us move on to capacitance. Any two conductors separated by insulation behave like a capacitor. In overhead lines, the air between conductors acts as this insulation. Therefore, capacitance naturally exists between any two conductors of the line. Capacitance is defined as the charge per unit potential difference, or simply charge divided by voltage. This capacitance, too, is spread uniformly across the line and can be imagined as a chain of capacitors connected between conductors. Now, here is the interesting part. When an alternating voltage is applied, 
The charge on the conductors keeps increasing and decreasing with every cycle, leading to a current known as the charging current. This charging current flows even when the line is open at the load end. In other words, even if no power is being supplied to consumers, the line still draws current. In a single phase line, capacitance is calculated between the two conductors. In a three phase line, we calculate the capacitance of each conductor with respect to neutral. If the spacing is symmetrical, the capacitances of all three phases are equal. But if the spacing is not symmetrical, then again, just like with inductance, transposition is used to equalize the average capacitance. Now what does capacitance do to the line? First, it causes the charging current to flow continuously. In short lines, this may not be noticeable, but in long high voltage lines, this current becomes significant. It supplies leading reactive power, which sometimes helps in improving the power factor. But in extra long lines, it can cause a strange phenomenon called the Ferranti effect, where the voltage at the receiving end actually rises higher than at the sending end, simply because of the line's capacitance. This can be dangerous for equipment at the consumer side, so engineers must take it into account. So when we put everything together, the picture is clear. Resistance is the villain that eats up real power and lowers efficiency. Inductance is the troublemaker that causes reactive drop, spoils voltage regulation, and drags down the power factor. Capacitance is the tricky companion that introduces charging current, sometimes helping by supplying leading reactive power, but sometimes overdoing it and creating over-voltage at the receiving end. Together, these three constants decide the fate of every transmission line, whether single-phase or three-phase. Now let me ask you this. If you had to design a long extra high voltage line, which of these three would worry you the most? The power loss due to resistance, the reactive drop due to inductance, or the Ferranti effect due to capacitance? Tell me in the comments. I'd love to know your perspective. If this explanation made things clearer, do press the like button, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more such deep yet easy explanations. And yes, you can also support me directly by using the thanks button or the join button below this video. Your support really helps me to keep creating quality content for you.